Hi folks, I'm back with an exciting experiment for you this time and I got my roll of felt graphite, graphite felt in the mail as you can see and it's about a quarter of an inch thick again like the other stuff but this is definitely conductive I've got the meter down here and I'm going to just stick it on the felt there and you can see it's 4.6 right there there's 2 point oh, there's 1.8 right there and that's a little over a centimeter apart something like that so you can see that it's uh, it's nice and conductive and I'll be running some experiments with that today to show you what I've learned since I've gotten it <coughs> and I will be back shortly with the first part of it. Alright, uh, first thing I want to show you is how I'm making my new uh, separator papers. And what I've got here is, uh, this is a piece of typing paper, and I've got carbon on graphite on one side and titanium dioxide on the other, but how I made this was different. I started off with my typing paper, and then I painted uh, graphite and water on one side of it and let that dry and then I buffed it and uh, what I discovered is you can really make a, a, a nice conductive graphite surface if you paint it on there first and let it dry before you buff it. Look at there, there's 217, 280 and it varies but and I did that, I did that in about two minutes and you can see I've gotten it down to uh, 250 ohms or so and you could get that down further I'm going to take a, a power sander with a buffing uh, disc on it and I bet I can get it down a lot further than that so anyway you do that first and then you paint your titanium dioxide on the other side of it and you come up with a, a pretty nice uh, pretty nice paper the next thing I, I learned was that the only PVA you need to put on is to cover the titanium dioxide. You don't want to put it on the other side of that. It just interferes and, and uh, so that's the uh, the paper we'll be using for the experiments today. Alright, I'll be back shortly with uh, the first thing, next thing to show you. Okay, next thing I want to show you is some carbon oxide that I made. And I don't know if you can see the brown color in there. It still looks kind of dark on the camera, but let me dip a piece of paper in here. And see, see how brown that is? And I, I did that. Uh, this is my hydrothermal carbonization process, and you can review my videos for how I do that. And, uh, and I add to that, I added a little bit of uh, uh, potassium uh, permanganate, or potassium permanganate. Now I took a, just a drop of that and I put it on my piece of uh, graph oil in here before I built this battery yesterday and uh, and then I tested this and it was incredible because all the power is coming from the oxidation of the metal on in this battery so by adding a little uh, something for the to be reduced in there we get a more complete oxidation reduction type of thing and uh, believe it or not this this battery right here climbed to over 200 milliamps uh, yesterday and that's just a two by two it's set over all all overnight and it's climbed to uh, 108 one right now 108 two and even after drying out all night ready three two one 72 Look at that, and it's holding really nice around 60. And that's set over, set overnight, and I discharged it at least 20 times last night and let it charge back up. So now let's uh, let's go back to our first battery over here and see what we're at. We're at 0.801. Let's see what our amps are on it now. Three, two, one. Climbed up 
to 46, holding it around 40. So you can really make these batteries as strong as you want. You know, it's just a matter of adding more graphite to for to store the energy in, really. All right, now I want to show you something else that I'm going to use here to make a pretty strong battery today. Now this is some of my highly porous carbon that I also make hydrothermally. So when this is the one I did outside and I got like 12 to 1 expansion on this. I'd show you show you this too. Now this is some carbon that I that I made last year. This sat for uh, two or three months and without it settling out so I know there's got to be some graphene in there. I know I've got some some graphene in there that I can that I can work with too but uh, I'm going to put that off for the future. But I just wanted to show you that the hydrothermal method I got does produce some graphene too and that may be what's it may be what's in here. This may be graphene oxide. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to set up and we're going to build. I'm going to build a more powerful battery and we'll test it. I'll be back. Okay, what I've done is I've spread two drops of carbon oxide on my graph oil and I put one thin coat of this uh, graphite on top of that. And now we're going to put the put this battery back together. I took the I took the graph felt out of it because one of the things is that you can load it up but you're also moving your electrodes farther apart. It drops your voltage some. So I, I don't like that bad part about it. But, and plus that's expensive. That's eight dollars or so to the cost of one cell. So that would bring my cell cost up to ten dollars a cell. I don't want that. So I may not even use the graphite uh, fill. Alright, so let's see what we got now. Alright, we're at 103.4. But you notice right away that we get better better voltage out of this too. It's almost 109. There's 109. And it's still climbing a little bit. We're going to test it right there though, for the first one. Alrighty, here we go. 3, 2, 1. 52, 82, 96, in the 90s already just to start. All right, let's uh, test the recharge on it. It should be fast. Yeah, we're already, look at that. We're almost back up to 108 now. There's 108. And we'll test it again at 109. Since that's quick, you don't have to wait. There's 109. Okay. Now we should see an increase in amps. 3, 2, 1. Yeah, 103. There we're going. We're moving up. All right. Let's just run right through it here real quick. All right, we're going 103, 104. Climbing fast. We're still under a minute, and we're almost back to full charge. 107.4, and there's typically a little, a little voltage drop at first while it builds up the amps. Three, two, one. 116. Yeah, baby. We be moving on up. And I'll just run it one more time here. Uh, 106. Let's do that one. Let's see, we should go above 116. Ready? 3, 2, 1. 134. Look at that. That's that four or five times in a row now. We've got a. It's increased. Alright, and we're. Coming back to 100. I may have to cut out a little of this self-charging stuff here, even though it is quick, because I'm going to do this several times. And there we got 106. Okay. 134 was the best so far. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. 140. Still climbing. What's that? Five or six times in a row. All right, I'll be back here. To, I'm just going to let that one rather than watch it. All righty, I'm back. And what I did was I took 
a little bit of my highly porous activated carbon here and I sprinkled it on top of my cathode and then I put the battery back together it's a little lumpy under there I really need to grind that stuff up and then mix it with graphite <laughs> all right but for right now we're just going to do it like that and see if it helps at all all right so we're now our voltage is 104.4.5 looks like it's still climbing from taking it back apart but we'll just test it right there and see what we got alrighty here we go 3 3 2 1 170 ooh 130 and then 172 I think let's uh charge it back up and do it one more time so we're at 96 7 let's give it a couple minutes here to, to climb back up and I'll be back all right I'm back and we're back to our same voltage we had last time I believe almost 104.2 we're going to test it right there all right here we go ready three two one 170 so it did what well, is up to 170 all righty so you can see that this battery is just keeping improving just like the other ones did and this one had an initial voltage of what 97 i think so this if it only doubles in voltage it's going to get to about 200 and uh, I think it'll probably go higher than that especially once I uh, optimize it a little bit more alrighty I'll be back with a wrap up I think and that'll be it alright I'm back with a wrap up here <coughs> now this is the this is the structure that we used for the for the cells today and uh, it's pretty simple structure it's just metal there's the uh, one thin uh, layer of PVA and borax on the titanium side of the separator paper here which has graphite of course on the other side now one thing I wanted to mention here was that the water that's important in this cell is all contained in this paper and in the PVA glue and in the borax crystal that's the only water that's important in this cell. If you add water anywhere else in the cell other than that, it does nothing. Okay? Now the other important thing is, is oxygen, but this cell is very forgiving. If you if you don't have oxygen flowing through, it's not going to stop the cell from working. It's going to work anyway, it's just not going to work quite as good. So that oxygen flowing through here, it ends up on your as an oxide on your on your metal over here. All your power comes from this metal right there, on the oxides that form on that. I've already broke the 200 milliamp barrier on this little battery right here yesterday and the overlap on this is only 16 square centimeters right here in the middle okay and my next battery that I build I'm going to build a thicker one here with a lot more activated carbon and graphite on it and I'm shooting for 500 milliamps or more out of a battery this size which is 2 by 3 which is the size that I'm going to use in the test chamber when I get around to testing the battery. At this point there's there's three stages to this project. The first stage was just to present the technology and I've done that. This is my 97th video that I've made in two and a half months. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is build a prototype 40 volt to charge my own system with and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that very last um, thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test the test the battery and get that data out and then my goal is accomplished whether society accepts the battery or not that's up to you I've done my part this is the ideal battery so what good is your uh, rechargeable battery going to do if you don't have any power to charge it but I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time